climate models are our attempt to reproduce the way the atmosphere behaves by understanding the laws of physics. What makes this project very difficult is that the climate system, the Earth is very big, it has very high resolution inhomogeneities. You go from a lake to a, a mountain to a building and so on. Uh, clouds are small kind of features relative to the entire planet. So getting all these very small, difficult details into a climate model is, is really impossible. So a climate model is a set of rules about which we think the atmosphere will behave, but it's not a complete set by any means. So it's a crude approximation. And this brings a lot of controversy, because how you approximate the way the real world operates is the assumption or brings about or incorporates those assumptions so that they then uh, determine what's going to happen in the future when you try to predict from these models. Uh, let me just give you an example here of where it's a real problem. We found from observations, and Roy Spencer led on this one, <laughs> that when the temperature of the atmosphere warms up, the greenhouse effect of clouds actually goes the other way and causes cooling so that these clouds act like a thermostat. In other words, if the temperature does rise, the clouds shrink so that the heat escapes to space. Climate models don't have that process. When their temperature rises, the greenhouse effect of clouds actually increases. And so this causes warming upon warming as you go on. In other words, carbon dioxide warms the air some, the extra carbon dioxide, then that creates clouds that cause more warming, their greenhouse effect, which causes the temperature to rise, which causes the clouds to create more warming and more temperature rise and so on. But if you put the observed effect in the climate models, which is that when it warms, the clouds actually cool the earth, you don't get that catastrophic warming at all. So these kinds of features in climate models that are very crude and can be wrong, um, give one pause, or one should be very cautious at dealing with the output of climate models for the distant future. Now the way we use observations is to check and test these models. And we've done that in a few cases already because if you have a climate model that projects something, that's a hypothesis. And we want to know how to test that hypothesis to see if it's true or not. And in a couple of cases, and we've published this, we've shown that the climate model projects one thing, over, they, they tried to reproduce the atmosphere over the last 50 years, say, a climate model tries to reproduce the atmosphere over the last 50 years, and then we check with real data. Well, what did actually happen in the last 50 years? And we found in some of these cases that the models just do not reproduce what the world has actually done. And these are significantly different, which means it's one way to say this part of the climate model is disproven. It, its hypothesis was checked and it failed the hypothesis. Now that's a lot of scientific mumbo jumbo just to say that a model ought to be good enough to reproduce the world that we already know has happened. And if it can't reproduce the past that we know has happened, would you want to trust it to reproduce the future which you know has not happened yet? Ask a weather forecaster what the temperature or rainfall is going to be in two weeks? He'll say, we don't know, because the models that predict the day-to-day -day weather don't have enough processes within them to account for the difficulties in the real world that we have around us.